Professor Triplett, and uh, today we're going to look at how we could make a best case scenario for getting reference pictures of an object <clears throat> and do it for a cheap price. So, uh, okay, let's take a look and see what we got here. All right, so obviously I have this lamp here that uh, I thought was really cool. I picked this up years ago at uh, Bill's Rock Shop in Delphi, Indiana. So if you're over in those parts, go check it out. It's kind of a neat place. Got a couple rulers, a really cheap T-square. Not even sure if it's 100% square, but it's close enough. One sheet of paper. Um, I traced around the circle. Then I used the T-square to make a square around it. I measured the half so that I would know exactly where the half was. And then the next thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to tape this down so it doesn't move. So I've got these little things here, drafting dots. These are actually about 15 years old and I still have them. So it tells you how many I've used. I, actually, I've used a lot of these, to tell you the truth. But they got me through my undergrad and my grad, and I still have more. So I think I paid uh, some uh, good dollars for something that lasted so long. So Technically, when you're doing this, if you've ever done any drafting, you're supposed to go diagonal to the next corner, like so. So I think you do the one, then you do the diagonal, if I remember correctly. And then you come back and you kind of pull on it. So, But you don't have to overthink it. It's just a matter of getting this thing flat so it's not going to move. Okay, so we'll go ahead here and make sure that's nice and flat. Throw those off to the side, and I'm going to pop this guy down. Now this object, it's, it's particularly nice because I've got a, a spot right here where it goes straight down the center, so um, that makes it easy to see where my center is. But the reason why I went ahead and traced it like this is because what I want to do is I'm going to take my phone out, and I'm going to start taking pictures of this at different angles and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it. I want to make sure that when I turn it uh, I basically you know line it right back up inside the circle so I'm basically getting the same distance uh, when I get my phone out and, and start actually doing that. Uh, and it doesn't have to be 100% perfect but the better you can do it you know the better your references will be. Okay so let's throw these off to the side so I don't knock them over. I put some canvases back here. Uh, I've got um, just plain canvases that somebody gave me for Christmas because they know that I would use them. And uh, I just threw them in the back. This is like just uh, n nothing here is very specific. You can use any desk. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I put the canvases here so that uh, when I take the pictures, hopefully the white uh, or any solid color, it doesn't matter what color it is, uh, will isolate this from the background, so it'll be easy to just see the object that you want to model. Okay, so the next step is to actually get the camera out and set that up. So I'm going to go grab my cell phone and I'm going to set it up. So that's the next step. All right, so here I've got my phone, and um, for anybody who is doing art and CG art and stuff like that. And if you don't have enough money to buy a DSLR, I'm actually recording this with a DSLR right now, uh, a good quality phone, like an iPhone, uh, a good, the top of the line Samsung, the top of the line LG. This is an LG V20, um, excellent camera. It actually has two cameras in it, uh, in the back, and one's a wide angle lens and one's like your normal lens. Um, and it just does some really, really great stuff. And it, it has all the functionalities, well, not all the functionalities, but it has a lot of the functionalities of a DSLR. So um, it's a good alternative. I mean, it's not, it's not as good as a DSLR, but you can do some good stuff with it. Uh, I also have uh, two contraptions here. Um, this is just like a tripod uh, base that you can basically put any kind of camera on, although it's kind of wimpy to hold up my DSLR, so I don't use it for that. 
Um, but uh, what I did was I bought this aluminum, um, what's this thing called actually? There we go. Ulanzi. It's an aluminum uh, tripod mount for my phone. So if I open it up all the way, it's kind of hard with the case on. Um, sometimes I actually take it out of the case. But I, you can slide this thing in there. Let's do that one more time. It does get pretty big. And this is a huge phone, so it's kind of a phablet phone. And... There we go. So I can even do it with the case on, but it's easier with the case off. Um, okay, so I can set up a scenario here where uh, I actually use this, stand it on something, and take nice stills. Um, but since that's not something that everyone will have, uh, I'm going to just put that off to the side, but that's just a nice little tool to have. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure my lights all the way up for my screen and let's go ahead and get into the camera app and um, whenever anybody is doing uh, whenever anybody's doing any kind of photography for references uh, it's a good idea if you have an actual uh, like zoom lens that's not a digital zoom that's an actual optical zoom to step back and zoom in as close as you can to your object um, the reason why is it cuts down on perspective distortion. So if I was able to step back with this phone and do a digital zoom, or an optical zoom, sorry, not a digital zoom. Digital zoom is not really that great. It, it messes your pictures up. They look pretty terrible, and it doesn't really do, it doesn't fix the distortion. So um, an optical zoom means the actual lens is adjusting to uh, make it get closer. So if you can do that, that's a good way to go. Um, so in this case, uh, I've just got this on auto, and I can use like this little lip right here on the edge of my desk. You can see where I'm pointing. I can use this to just kind of put this up to and hold it on there. And then this phone actually has a function, so I don't actually have to hit it. So I can just say cheese, and it didn't work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so I took a picture of the front. And then let's say I'll just do one of like a three quarter just so I have a reference of the three quarter. And I'm keeping it within the circle for the most part. And then let's turn it to the side. So the most important that you get are the fronts, the front, the side, top, bottom, and uh, back. So you'll see I'll get all of those. So here's a nice side shot. You can take as much time on this as you want. Let's go to the back. There we go. And there's a picture. Um, if the object is symmetrical, you don't really have to worry about getting both sides, but in this case, this does have some differences from side to side, so I'm just going to get both. And now that we've got all of those angles, I'll go ahead and just lay this on its back here. And this one's going to be a little bit weird. Um, I'm going to just hold it and try to make sure it's like the same distance. So let's see if I can get the cheese function to work. Cheese. Cheese. There it goes. Sometimes the microphone doesn't pick it up, so that's that's why you need to do that. And let's go ahead and get the the bottom here. So we'll do this one too. So let's see if we can get it. Alright, something like that. The lighting's not the best for the bottom. Maybe if I move it back just a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay. Cheese, cheese, cheese and rice, <sighs> cheese. All right, we're going to have to approach this a different way. I'm going to let go. There we go. Okay, that should be 
all I need to get this thing going. And I'll just turn that off. I'll transfer those into my computer and then I will post process them in Photoshop and get them all lined up and that will be uh, coming up next.